roses are always popular on my channel, so let's paint another one. Okay, first things first, don't worry if you can't draw because as you can see I have a simple outline here which I've traced down from a photograph and I'll tell you later on how you can obtain this photograph to print out and trace it down the old school way like this. Super easy to do, you don't have to draw freehand if you don't want to. I'm using a rough pressed paper today and uh, this is 100% cotton and my brushes are a number two pointed snowdrop brown, a number five spotter and my eradicator brush and I'll be explaining to you later on a little bit more detail about these brushes. My favourite palette from Etcher as well as the colours that we have here. Now my colours that I'm using today are from the Signature 24 set by A Gallo. A Gallo are an incredible brand and I've been using these paints for quite some time but you don't have to have these colours. Um, I'll explain to you as we work through alternative colours that you can use that may be within your own set. This is the set that I'll be working from. Just look at these stunning colours. You can see they've come with a swatch card to swatch out your colours, which makes colour matching super easy. And there's a card on the top of your screen right now that explains to you how to create one yourself. So let's mix our first wash. I begin by mixing Lemon Yellow Pale with Medici Red to a lovely, really watery consistency, along with the lemon on its own. Now I'm mixing up a tiny bit of quinacridone violet with a tiny bit of that orange tone. We want our first wash to be really, really watery so we have a lot of water compared to pigment. I'm using my number five size spotter brush to apply this colour and you can see how I'm switching up the colours as I work through. This is our base layer on which we will apply a ton of layers on top, but they must be watery otherwise the paint might go to mud. We don't want that muddy look with our watercolour. So you can see I'm just mixing the colours up as I go through. Now spotter brushes are very similar to round brushes but they have more of a kind of stubbier bristle. This makes application a whole lot easier especially if you're new to watercolour painting and have struggled in the past. So this is a very very watery wash of the quinacridone violet and with a tiny bit of that orange mixed in. Be careful you don't want your colours to run together. You can see this goes all over the head of the flower and you just want this to dry um, before you apply your next layer. Now you have to trust the process with this because watercolour does look a bit strange as you're working through. So often when I started painting, I ditched my paintings halfway through thinking that they looked wrong, but you have to just push past that really ugly stage to make your paintings look pretty towards the end. So I've mixed up a green here with just the lemon yellow permanent with a tiny bit of that horizon blue and to mix this beautiful vibrant green tone which I'm taking all down the stem and I have the horizon blue on its own here on the first layer of the leaves which I mix up with the other green as you can see me doing here. So the two colours together just on the uh, first wash of the leaf fair and I'm now using my smaller brush which is my number two snowdrop pointed round. All of my brushes are from Rosemary & Co and all of the materials that I'm going to be using today I will link in the description box underneath this video along with these stunning paints from A Gallo. Horizon Blue is a really sort of bluey green tone and if you don't have Horizon Blue you could make something very similar by perhaps um, Forest Green with Payne's Grey, that kind of colour. You want it to be really bluey green. So you can see how I'm adding the green colour here, nice and close up for you to see. This is the blue, just really carefully using the tip of my number two brush here. And I've added a tiny bit of that lighter green tone, that more vibrant green that I've mixed, and just using my brush here to push it into the pencil line. I'm adding a tiny bit of purple to the tip of that sepal as well. Okay, so everything's now dry. It's all about building up these colours and making them start to come to life. So the same colours as before. We have the lemon colour along with, this is actually another colour that I've added, the quinacridone magenta. Okay, I decided to add a, a little bit of a pinky tone, so I decided to add quinacridone magenta to the mix and mix up a lovely yellow colour as we did to this at the start of this video. So we have lemon yellow with a tiny bit of the uh, Medici red just going on here. Again, still very light and watery and you can see the colours that I'm mixing up for my palette there. So we have the orange tone. Next to that we have quinacridone magenta with a tiny bit of quinacridone violet. 
and just a little bit of that red tone as well. You can see that now that everything's dry and I'm applying that second wash with my number two brush, you can still see that lovely lemon tone underneath. This is the beauty of watercolour. You can see how those colours glaze over one another and you can still see that beautiful wash underneath shining through. This gives your painting another dimension, but it is important that you let every colour dry before you apply it. Just dropping in a tiny bit of magenta there to that corner section and again just blending it through. If you're wondering why I've got that tiny puddle of water in the middle of my palette, it's a really good way of cleaning your brush rather than using your water jar because by doing that sometimes you flood the uh, ferrule of the brush with water and it runs down into your bristles and it makes it bloom all over your painting and you don't want that. So by cleaning it in the little puddle there, patting my brush on the kitchen paper, as you can see me doing here, and blending it through prevents all those errors. Using a watery mix of quinacridone violet on the bottom here. Because these colours are very, very strong, you don't need an awful lot of pigment for some really good colour payoff. I'm adding the orange tone to the top here to give that base petal a little bit more um, sort of tonal variation, a little bit of colour switch. We don't want the colour to look flat, so by just adding a tiny bit of a different colour, it just gives it a little bit more realism. Ordinarily, I would put the photograph in the screen so that you can see what I'm talking about, but I haven't today simply because I'm using the reference photograph just as a guide. And if you'd like access to that, I will put it at the end of the video along with the outline, and you can also obtain them over on our Facebook group, which I will link in the description box underneath this video. This is the magenta with a little bit of orange. You can see I'm just building up those colours. If you are enjoying this video, I provide new content every single Tuesday. And if this is something that interests you, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that little bell notification. That way you won't miss new uploads every single Tuesday. If you are enjoying this video, could I ask you please to give me a big thumbs up? It's a free way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it does mean that more people can see it. So as you know, today I'm using A Gallo paints. So let's just take a moment to check out this incredible brand. did fancy treating yourself to some new paints and you are in the market for buying some then do check them out. I'm just applying a plain water glaze here. Ideally you want everything to be dry as you can see you might have merged together a little bit but not to worry. Now over here on YouTube, we release new content every Tuesday, but if botanical painting is your thing and you really want to level up, then you may want to join my Patreon. So let's just take a little look at what we have to offer. If you love botanical painting and want to know more, then you may want to join our Patreon. We have different membership levels so that you can take your botanical painting to the next level. With our Clematis level, you will have a full-length, in-depth tutorial every month. And if you'd like to make even more progress, then check out our Rose level, where we now have a mentorship offering feedback to help you grow. 
you won't find any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube and you can cancel your membership at any time. So if you want to take your botanical painting to the next level, then take a look. I'll put the link in the description underneath this video. So just to let you know, we don't have any of our Patreon tutorials here on YouTube. Our YouTube tutorials are full length so that everyone can join in. But if you really want a slower pace and a much more detailed tutorial, then you may want to join my Patreon. And once again, I will link it in the description box underneath this video. So we've got the same colours mixed up as before here, the greens and the blues that I mixed up earlier, this time to a little, um, a thicker consistency and you can see I've got a tiny bit of that magenta with that blue tone there on my brush. This time I'm using a stipple in motion to create a little bit of texture on the sepal that you can see here and the green tone on the outside. Of course everything is dry at this point. Just continuing the process, we've already got that first wash on the stem and just brightening it up with some more of that green mix that I mixed up earlier on. So this is just the lemon that I used along with a tiny bit of the gorgeous Horizon Blue. Dropping this in on the side here, this is wet and wet so you can see I'm just patting it in with the tip of my number two brush and so it gently merges into that damp paint like this. So watercolour does have this kind of ugly duckling stage that we spoke about earlier on. Um, it's something that so many people struggle with with watercolour painting, thinking that they've made a mistake. So let me know in the comments below what it is that you struggle with the most when you're painting with watercolour, because it is a tricky medium, isn't it? Okay, everything's now dry and you can see that beautiful wash that we had on these leaves at the start. Now I'm taking a mix of Horizon Blue with a little bit of that green that we mixed earlier just to vary the colour and we're going over that first wash now but we can still see that lovely yellow, yellow bluey tone underneath. So this is the beauty of watercolour. We're layering up these colours to create depth and form and it's just looking really really gorgeous now. You can see that transparency shining through just using the tip of my brush here to add a tiny bit of detail on the outside to give that leaf some texture. We don't want the leaf to look flat so just using the brush to push that paint up to the pencil line. Horizon blue with a tiny bit of lemon on the bottom here leaving a little gap in the middle. This is called negative painting. So we're just creating a shape here to create the illusion of a vein. Dropping in another ton of that beautiful Horizon Blue. This is one that I highly recommend for your palette. It's an unusual looking color for botanical work, but it's a really great mix and color as well. And on its own, it has this stunning color that's really hard to, to match. I can't seem to get it quite right if I mixed something similar myself. So this is something that I would really, if you're in the market for new paint, um, definitely consider this one. I'll put the link to um, the Signature 24 set underneath as well as the individual colors that I've used because it may be that you just want to buy the five colors that I've used today So I'll put those in the description box underneath this video along with all the other tools that I'm using today So remember to stay right until the end of this video so that you can see this whole process unfold. And don't forget, I also provide you right at the end, after the outro, the line drawing and the reference photograph so that you can join in with me here. We want to make art accessible to everybody so um, you can just print them out that way if you don't want to join our Facebook group. Do consider joining us there though because we are an awesome community. You can share your finished paintings there as well and your works in progress and have some feedback from me and my incredible team. We have a lot of roses on our YouTube channel. Um, it seems to be something really, really popular to paint. So I'll put a playlist at the end of this video with all our other rose classes so that you can click through and I'll see you there right at the end. Roses are so beautiful, I think, and um, a lot of people ask me to uh, keep creating them. So I hope you like this one today and you have to kind of get past that messy stage, okay? So I'm using the darker green tone now just to go around the areas where the leaves attach onto the stem here.
So once again, everything's dry and we're back to mixing the colors for the rose. So once again, we have the lemon tone, the red tone, and of course the magenta and that gorgeous quinacridone violet. And you can see the consistency that I'm using here. At this time, we need to start putting in a bit more of the shading. So at this point, it's all about adding some detail. We need to add a bit of tonal value. So as you can see, using my number two pointed round, this is the snowdrop pointed round, I'm just putting the darker values in around those little petal folds as you can see me doing here, and blending them in as the same way as before. I won't keep mentioning the colors that I'm picking up here because you can see what I have mixed up on my palette. Um, same colors as before, but this time a more kind of, uh, less water is added to make them slightly thicker and more pigmented. If you are struggling with any colours or if I'm going too fast, remember you can slow down this video, pause it and rewind it and go back to the bit that you maybe missed. And as always, if you're struggling with colour matching, let me know in the comments and I will do my best to help you. When I'm adding my tonal contrast and my tonal values, I don't take the colour everywhere. It's just here and there and then just blending it through. You can still see that lighter colour showing underneath. And now I'm just adding a bit of veins, just pulling up some colour there. And you can see that lighter colour shining through underneath there. Working around that little bit of negative space, switching up my colours just to add some variation. No rules here, just add the colours that you feel are needed. Just to give a little bit of variation, you don't want your colours to look flat and if you just add one colour it's going to look a little bit unnatural, so just switch them up as you work through. Because I lost some colour earlier on, because I was a little bit too hasty with that plain, with that plain water glaze, you need to make sure that um, your paint is completely dry before you do that. So because I lost that pigment, I'm just going over it now, as you can see. And I'm also adding a tiny bit of color to these folds on the rose because they're a little bit too stark at the moment. I felt that that yellow color was a little bit too flat. So I'm just adding a little bit more tone, as you can see me doing there. And I'm just switching between the colors of my palette um, to whatever I feel like using to make them a little bit more varied and, as I said, less flat and a bit more interesting. Just continuing to build up the colours.
So you saw me there just working through in the same manner. Now I'm using my small eradicator brush to lift out a little bit of paint. All you need to do is use a wet or damp brush and pat it gently and use your kitchen paper to blot it, which causes a little bit of negative space there and you can paint around that to create some interest. Just carrying on the same process as before, just building up those layers slowly and taking note where you want to add a bit of definition. Blending in the colours in the same way and just adding some veins. Just use a really light touch and a wiggly hand to create some texture like this. Now at this point I decided to use my Tintoretto liner brush. It's actually, I think it's sold as a round brush, but this is a really fine point. It's much easier to add some detail with this. You can of course use any brush that you feel comfortable with, but I had this one in my kit. So I, again, I will link this in the description box. By adding some finer detail like this here and there with a fine liner brush as I'm doing here, it really makes everything sort of come together and really look like everything's deliberate. I'm a huge fan of outlining things as you can see me doing here, and it's a great way of adding detail. If you use a brush that's sort of too small and just has um, like a zero 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 brush you may find that you don't have any control but something like this is a really good one to have within your kit um, makes kind of outlining and finer detail really really good you can also use your number two snowdrop brown if you have that within your kit but I just felt this needed a little bit of something extra so I'm using this one today as you can see it's a size zero and it's from Jackson's along with most of the other um, things that I'm using today apart from the brushes which are from Rosemary at this point, um, we're almost done, so I'm just going to do a bit of fine tuning here and there, outlining some of the folds on the top of the petals as you see me doing here. Please stay until the end of this video so that you can see the finished painting, as well as have access to the outline and the reference photograph to work from. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have, remember to give it a thumbs up, and hopefully I'll see you next week. Once again, thank you for watching, see you soon.